we can also talk to Chris Phillips, not Chris Phil, but Chris Phillips, who is the former head of the National Counter-Terrorism Security Office. Chris, you're very welcome to Talk TV. Duncan, I'll come to you in a second, but Chris, can I just get your initial reaction to this breaking news that Daniel Cleef, thank goodness, has been uh, found and is back in police custody? Yeah, it's really good news and, and quite quick now. Um, that today it's all sort of come to a head, which is a, a great thing for the policing and, and, and also the members of the public that have obviously dobbed, in, hit, dobbed him in to some extent uh, in Chiswick. I think uh, it was always likely to be caught very quickly if he didn't have a, a big circle of people helping him out, and that uh, appears to be the case. So great work by the police and, uh, and what a stupid silly thing he's done actually he's just created a a, a big um, heavy load for himself for the next five or six years uh, that he might may well spend in prison it's interesting as well because uh, of course he is a suspect he hasn't been convicted of anything although we, i think we can probably fairly uh, safely say that he certainly escaped from prison we knew we knew that and there'll be charges around that i'm sure but certainly i mean there was the 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 potential that he could have got off these charges because you are in the system innocent until proven guilty so as a suspect he could have been fine i wonder the question is not just how he escaped but also why he escaped and as someone who was a head former head of the uh, national counter terror security office what kind of questions will they be asking him at the moment because there's so many elements to this aren't there chris there's the security element there's the uh, element of escape there's the fact that he was in wandsworth in the first place and not belmarsh or something somewhere like that, a higher security prison that terror suspects are often brought to, but also the process in terms of what happens now, bringing him back into custody, finding out how, why as well, which is a big question, isn't it? Well, escaping from prison is a specific offence and, and he will be in a police station now and will be questioned as to how he did it, why he did it, uh, and who helped him uh, to do that. And uh, anyone that has helped him in any way is also liable to a, a, a prison sentence. So there'd be, you know, it's a really silly thing to do. We, we but, heard, sorry, uh, yeah. to, sorry to interrupt you, we heard Mark Rowley yesterday, the head of the Metropolitan Police, or Mark Rowley, say that it was clearly pre-planned and that he may have had help. In your assessment, Chris, and I understand obviously we've got to be careful about these things because there are legal cases coming up, but he hasn't been charged with anything yet in regard to the escape, so we can talk about this. Um, Chris, do, do you think he Get help? Do you think this was planned? Do you agree with Mark Rowley? Well, I, I mean, I don't know just how weak the security is in that side of the prison, but the fact that he was in that prison at all just is quite astounding. And, and let's be quite honest, he's not going to be in that prison from now on. He's going to be back in Belmarsh and he's going to stay there, which is another crazy thing that he's done and uh, the result of silly behaviour. But, um, I, you know, it does look as though he, he may well have been able to plan this on his own. Maybe there were people that just weren't doing their job properly. We know that those people in that particular area of the prison are the lowest paid, often the poorest trained. And, and we all know that, um, yeah, sometimes uh, mistakes will be made. Sometimes they'll be deliberately made. Um, it it kind of depends on the seriousness of, of, of his contacts. It doesn't sound as though he's got a big group of people looking after him, um, Iranians, as we thought uh, to, at one stage. Do you think we can discount <laughs> that? Do you think we can discount that he, he had uh, any help from Iran? I mean, he didn't get very far. He got six miles away, roughly, from, from Wandsworth Prison. He, he, he was not, there wasn't a sort of chopper swooping in to uh, extract him and bring him to Iran. Yeah, if, he, if he'd been with the Iranians, he'd been in a safe house. Uh, and you wouldn't have seen him for months, and, and then he would have been discreetly uh, taken out of the country. But but the, the, the key point here is that, listen, he's managed to get out. And, I mean, it just shows the shocking state of Wandsworth Prison and, and, and how easy it was for him to do that. Um, and, of course, uh, once the police and the public are on side looking for someone, in this country in particular, it's very, very difficult for you to stay on the run and anyone that's watched these tv programs like hunted knows the psychological issues people face when they're trying to stay away you know the stress levels of doing that are, are, are very very many and and i think he's made such a big mistake here because even if he doesn't get uh, prosecuted or, or found guilty of the uh, the spying charges he has now committed a criminal offense for which he will do time and that's just ridiculous on his behalf. And, and it's kind of ironic, isn't it? Because in theory, he could be found not guilty of the char of the stuff he's charged with at the moment. And in theory, he could be found guilty of escaping from prison and actually serve time for being on remand uh, for charges on which he was not convicted. Uh, it, it, I mean, that, that's hypothetically possible, isn't it? 
Absolutely. And, and don't forget, he was in a reasonably cushy job uh, within a reasonably cushy prison. And now he's not going to have any of that. I mean, he's just made so many silly silly decisions, it seems, and uh, he's going to be paying for this for probably the rest of his life. I want to bring Duncan Gardham back in in a second, but Kenny from Edinburgh has been in touch on text. He says, Hi, Cardi P. My little brother works in Her Majesty's Prison, Edinburgh. He says that Daniel Khalif must have been helped by someone on the inside to escape. He couldn't have gotten that lucky, and even with incompetent guards, he still couldn't have escaped, and there are just too many obstacles between him and freedom. He had to have help. That was something that certainly that Sir Mark Rooley, the uh, the uh, Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, Head of the Metropolitan Police, was saying yesterday. And Duncan Gardham is still with us, security analyst, expert in international terrorism. Uh, there's so many questions around this, Duncan. There's so much to get into, uh, certainly. But do you agree with uh, Chris Phillips there in regard to the road that uh, Daniel Khalif has made for himself in terms of this prison escape? I very, do, I very much do. And Chris is a very wise man on this subject, you know, because... Daniel Khalif, the, the charges that he was facing, although they sound serious, you know, possession of terrorist material uh, and the bomb making charge and that and such like, they're not in when you dig into them, aren't quite as serious as they might initially appear. And that's because the bomb was only a fake device uh, and that the material he was downloading was personnel files rather than uh, anything more highly sensitive. And whether he actually managed to pass it on still seems to be some uh, matter of uh, of debate uh, or, or certainly contention. Uh, and he would will have had a case to put forward uh, in court, whether he um, and and was planning to go to trial to make that case. So. Uh, Everybody in front of a court has a possibility of getting acquitted. And that still remains, of course, for Daniel Khalif when he does face trial. Um, however, the, the prison escape, which will be dealt with separately, um, makes matters infinitely worse for him. And, uh, and, and in a sense, complicates the whole picture because the, the part of the picture that is emerging of Daniel Khalif is, is that you know, to a certain extent, he was this kind of what um, serving soldiers often call a kind of Walter Mitty character, if you like, somebody who uh, was a bit of a fantasist and playing up their role and seems to have in enjoyed this idea of going on the run, even though he had no actual plan for what he was going to do once he escaped. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, very good point there, uh, Duncan. We've actually had Cassie in Lincoln has been in touch. As a former prisoner in uh, 2006, Cassie says, it is not unusual for remand prisoners to work in the kitchens. All delivery trucks are searched on entry to the prison and, crucially, should be watched by officers during the delivery process. Plus, live CCTV monitoring of vehicles, most crucial of all, is a roll count or head count, which will take a place of kitchen prisoners before the vehicle can leave that area. A final check is made at the main gate with inside and top and underneath the vehicle. I don't find it unusual for a non-violent prisoner to be held in remand at a Category B prison, says Cassie. Is Cassie right, uh, Duncan? Do you think it's it's not unusual? It's not unusual. And, and you know, he wasn't charged with bomb-making, um, and uh, there are quite a few uh, categories of charge that would be higher than that. Um, although he was identified as a flight risk by prosecutors uh, in those initial trial hearings and perhaps that message didn't go up uh, into the custody chain so that because really the categorization is as much to do with their risk of trying to escape as it is to do with the seriousness of the offending so the combination of the offending and their uh, and their likelihood of trying to escape is what ends up with that categorization rather than purely the nature of the offense and if he was a flight risk and they were concerned he might have been seeking contacts that might have assisted him to take flight then that should have been taken into account by the prison service and but i think we need a bit more detail to understand how he was categorized and whether other people in the same situation might have been categorized in the same way yeah, it's interesting. We've had someone in touch as well. Dawn says, interesting that the convict story has eliminated all media discussion of the government's draconian green energy bill noted through yesterday. Dawn, don't worry, we will be returning to all those issues, but this is the major breaking news if you're just joining us. The terrorist suspect, Daniel Khalif, arrested by police. He has been caught in Chiswick in West London. He got about uh, six miles away from Wandsworth Prison to get to uh, Chiswick, which is, uh, as I say, two hours and 15 minutes to walk. Uh, there were lots of police 
searches and so on. And Chris Phillips for the, the counter-terrorism angle of this. Of course, those were the original charges that he was brought up, uh, that he was uh, charged with and was remanded to Wandsworth Prison. Just talk us through those, because Duncan was saying earlier that they're perhaps not quite as serious as was originally put forward. Obviously, we've got to be careful because he is up in court in November on those, but I think it's fair to discuss them at the moment. Just from your perspective, how dangerous was this guy? Well, I think, uh, as uh, Duncan said, it, they, they were at the lowest end of the scale of, of concern, really. But, but of course, anyone that makes a fake bomb and, uh, with the intention of scaring people commits a, a, a serious offence. But, you know, as I said before, they, they were on the low end of the scale. And, and what he's done now is created such a rod for himself that, um, that, you know, he will be almost certainly locked up for many more years than he would have done otherwise, even with these uh, uh, charges, because, uh, I mean, at best, he would have probably had two or three years, and the government are very keen on getting rid of people from prison, so chances are he would have been out very quickly anyway, and uh, th th this is the, the big shame of it. I think he's just made some bad, bad decisions. Uh, he has made some bad decisions. Do you think the police made a good decision by offering a £20,000 reward for this, uh, Chris? Because it seemed that very quickly, I'm not sure you can say cause and effect, but certainly pretty quickly after that, uh, that, that there, were, there were certainly many sightings or lots of people getting in touch with the police, I'm sure just doing their civic duty, but it did seem that that was at least one element of what uh, made, made them swoop on Daniel Khalif, although of course there were 150 officers and undoubtedly they'll have been working very, very hard over the past four days. Yeah, the vast majority of uh, people would report as uh, someone that was wanted for terrorism offences, I'm sure. But there's that extra kick, isn't there, of, uh, of making the call uh, with the possibility of £20,000 being uh, placed into your bank account. And, uh, and we see time and time again that, uh, you know, a little bit of money like that does speed things up. Uh, and let's be quite honest, you know, there were 150 officers working on this and there would have been those officers would have had, had to work huge amounts of overtime and, and, and extra hours, etc., to cover this. So £20,000 in the big scale of things mm. is, is a small amount to, to get him in even a day early. Yeah, absolutely. Just a final thought now. Thank you, Chris. Final thought from Duncan Gardham, uh, a security analyst and expert in international terrorism. Duncan, just give us your final thought for, for this programme anyway on this investigation, on this affair, in terms of what it means and uh, where it goes now. Well, look, I've I've seen a, a a significant, a small but significant number of quite serious terrorists who were on bail uh, or on tag schemes disappear from uh, surveillance operations and uh, and turn up uh, in in Syria. In one case, it Arthur Dar executing uh, prisoners in Syria. Uh, in another case, uh, joining Al Qaeda in Pakistan. Uh, after lying low for 14 months before finally getting out of the country. So these uh, search operations, these manhunts can go wrong. Uh, we've seen uh, after the uh, 2005 bombings, some failed bombings in which the individual ended up in Rome and was luckily caught up with in Rome. But people can get out of the country. They can travel uh, large distances and some of them are never caught again. Yeah. So have to be praising of the police and that intelligence lead we're told uh, that led them to Chiswick and the careful investigation that has unraveled over the last three days that have caught up with a trained we have to remember a trained soldier a mm. trained miller uh, that has finally got him back in custody